So if statements can control the flow of your application by checking a certain condition and then running some code based on whether that evaluates to true or false. Now we've already covered the Boolean variable type and we've already seen a really basic example of an if statement, but let's dive into if statement and take a closer look. So you'll use if statements quite often when building applications and they're pretty straightforward, but we're also going to be talking about some best practices when using them just to make sure your code ends up as clean as possible, easy to read and easy to maintain. So first, let's just define out a variable and check this under a condition. So we're going to say day of week and set this to one. So let's just assume that one represents a Monday and we want to output what day of the week it is based on what this value holds. The first thing we might do is create our if statement. So remember we have the if keyword, we have our condition within rounded parentheses, and then we have square brackets just here to represent the block we want to be run. Now to compare if day of week is equal to one, what we don't do is say day of week equals one. What we're technically doing here is reassigning the variable. So if we were checking that day of week equals two, then down here, what actually is going to happen is day of week will end up being the value of two. And we can prove that by refreshing the page. So we've got to be really careful here. When we compare things, we use either a double equals or we use a triple equals. Now, triple equals is a little bit different. We're going to speak about that later. That also compares the type, but let's stick to a simple double equals for now. So if day of week equals one, then we want to echo out it is Monday, simple as that. So let's get rid of this echo down here and let's go ahead and refresh the page. So we know that this works. If we switch this over to two, we know that this statement here doesn't evaluate to true or this condition here because we're comparing the value to one, which will return false because day of week is two and therefore we don't see anything. So now that we've done this, we need to deal with the other days of the week. So for this, we could use an else to output something if this condition is false. So for example, I could say else run another block if this condition here doesn't evaluate to true. And I could say something generic like it is not Monday like that. So now we have that two in there. We're saying it is not Monday. And again, when we switch this over to one, we see it is Monday. Now, in this case, what we've built isn't very flexible at all. Ideally, what we'd want to do is check every single option and output something according to that. So if it's one, it's Monday, two, it's Tuesday, so on right up until Sunday. Now, just to warn you, this here isn't the best way to deal with this problem. We're going to demonstrate this very, very quickly, but then I'm going to show you a better way to do this. So let's go over and in here, rather than say else, we're going to say else if, and then we have a new condition. So in this case, we're going to say if the day of the week equals two, remember that double equals, then we want to go ahead and run another block. And then we can literally just keep chaining these on. So I'm going to say else if day of week is three, I want to run another block. So in this case, we'll just stick to uh, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So let's go ahead and fill these in and here as well. So Wednesday, and then if we change this up, so for two, we see the following, let's change it back to one. We see Monday. And of course, if we change it to three, we see Wednesday and anything outside of this, we won't see anything because there's nothing to deal with this. Now, if you wanted to do this for every single day of the week, and then you wanted to say, that it isn't a valid day of the week if it falls outside of the scope of one to seven, then you could go ahead and implement an else for this. So let's just imagine for the sake of this so we can save a bit of time that there are only three days in the week. Now else, and this is our final else, we're gonna say that is not a valid day. So now if we choose say four, five, six or seven, we would see that is not a valid day because none of these conditions here have been met. So as I said, you could continue this on and on until you've checked every single option from one to seven, but this isn't the cleanest solution. Now to actually create a cleaner solution to this, can you think of a better way to assign a specific number to a string? We've already looked at them. 
you would use an array for this. So what I'm going to do is just divert away from if statements very quickly. And we're going to go ahead and implement this so you have a practical example of how you would actually do this. And then we're going to return to some more complex things later. So if it doesn't make sense, then we'll, uh, we'll see later. So the first thing I would do in this case is go ahead and just assign an array to a variable, maybe something like weekdays or more appropriately days of week. This would now be an array. And what we could do is we could assign one, the value Monday. We could do two and assign the value Tuesday. And we could basically just do this over and over again. So three Wednesday. Now what we're doing here is we are creating numerical indexes on our own. So when we do a var dump on days of week, we should see in the browser the following. One is Monday, two is Tuesday and so on. Now what we would do is we would up here say day of week. Now let's say this is something that a user has provided. So maybe they choose one. Now down here, we can create an if statement to check if this value provided is within here. Now to do this, what we would do is say in array. Now what we need to do is pick out the keys here. So to do that, we would use a function called array keys, and then we would go ahead and say days of week. So just so this makes complete sense, let's just take this part out, go down here, and let's go ahead and do a var dump on this. So I'm going to comment this out and we'll take a look at what this gives us. You can see here we have a new array with one, two and three. You can ignore the keys in this case because they've just been reset. Now, again, if this doesn't make sense, don't worry, we'll be covering things like this later. But this is just an example, just so you know. So the in array function that I've used here takes the value. So, for example, one, two, three or four. And this will give us a true or a false value. So the day of the week that we've provided is just called day of week. What we're saying here now is if this evaluates to true, which is the result of the in array function, we take a first parameter in here, which is the day that we've specified. We take the array keys, which is one, two and three. And we're checking if this is within these values here. So if that's the case, we can then echo out days of week and then at the day of week that we gave. So this might seem a little bit complicated, but by the end of the series, this will make complete sense. So let's give that a refresh. Monday here, we say Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. Now, if I were to do four, this doesn't work, but what we could do is say else, and then say that is not a valid day. There we go, because we haven't defined four in here. If we were to define four in here, like this, and obviously that is a Thursday, then this would work. So a little bit of a diversion there, but if that doesn't make sense, take a look at this code very carefully and see if you can really work out what's going on here. Hopefully that makes sense though. Okay, so let's move on to nesting. Almost anything in PHP can be nested inside another block if you have blocks. So for example, let's build out a very small thing that goes ahead and tells us our name and then also will go ahead and tell us if we have a long name. So if I were to define out my name here, so Alex, and I were to create an if statement just here, we're going to say if name, so we make sure that's set, we're going to echo out your name is and then we're going to concatenate on names. This should be pretty straightforward. We have a name defined. If we do have a name defined, then we echo it out. So let's go ahead and refresh here. Your name is Alex. If, for example, this was set to null, as we saw earlier, null inside of an if statement will evaluate to false and we don't see anything. So hopefully that makes sense. OK, so now what happens if we have a pretty long name? Well, what we can do is we can nest an if statement inside of this if statements block. So let's say my name was Alexander James Garrett, which is actually my name. Then we can in here create another if statement to see if this is a very long name. Now to do this, we're going to be using a function that we've not looked at, and that is strlen. 
Now this stands for string length. And if we pass in a value like name, this will give us back a number of characters of our name. So in this case, we can say, well, is this greater than 10? And we haven't looked at these kind of comparison operators yet, but we will do later. Then we're going to echo out, oh, and you have a very long name like so. Give that a refresh. There we go. Your name is Alexander James Garrett. Oh, and you have a very long name. And to make this a bit better, we could put a dot just in there and that would go ahead and create two sentences for us. Now, if I change this back to Alex, like so, we see your name is Alex and we don't see that other string. So you could technically nest as many if statements as you needed. You could nest something else in here and then you could nest something else inside of that. But essentially this makes your code very unreadable uh, and also very difficult to maintain as well. Just looking at it, it's pretty confusing. So here's another way to write this out uh, exactly what we've done here, but make it a little bit cleaner. Now we're going to be introducing something called the inversion operator here. So what we want to do is first of all, check if we don't have a name and then not do anything. So to do this, we're going to create an if statement and we're going to say if not using an exclamation mark name. Now in this case, this block will be run if we don't have a name. So in this case, we might do something like return, which will basically break the execution of the script and nothing will be run. Now to prove this down here, I'm just going to echo out hello and we're going to go ahead and see this. So if I go ahead and refresh, we see hello. If I were to change this to null, we don't see anything because at this point here, the script's been broken and nothing else down here will be run. OK, so now that we know that that works, what we can now do is just leave this on its own. It just makes a little bit more sense. And down here, we can do things we want to do if there is a name, because we know if there's no name, it would have been killed at this point. So let's return our name to Alex or whatever your name is. And then we're going to go ahead and echo out here. Your name is and we can concatenate that on like so. There we go. Now let's concatenate on a final full stop. And again, you can use double quotes here if you prefer. Go ahead and refresh. Your name is Alex. Now what we can do on the next line is use that same check using strlen to check if the name, so the length of the name, is greater than 10. And then down here we can say, oh, and you have a long name like so. So a lot cleaner than nesting. It's always a good idea to try not to nest uh, if you can. And there we go. Change this over to Alexander James Garrett. And there we go. It works exactly the same way, but we've kept this all to one level and it's a lot tidier. So now we're going to look at the other things that will cause a if statement to be run. Now, earlier we spoke about how one is a true value and zero is not. And we know that if we do if true, for example, then this will always be run. So this will always be run. Let's take a look and there we go. We know that we can't get away from this because true will always evaluate to true. Similarly, if we have false, this will never be run. So pretty straightforward. Now, the thing to always think about is if you are using numbers inside of a condition, if one then echo, this will always be run. This kind of makes sense because one is a truthy value. Let's refresh and we see this will always be run. Now, if I were to say if zero, zero kind of is a false value. So we don't see that block run. So really important to be careful with these kind of things. However, if I was to say if minus five, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, this will be run. This doesn't make too much sense, really, if you think about it, because technically you would class this as a negative or false value. But it's important to note that any positive number will always evaluate to true. Zero will always evaluate to false. And any minus integers that aren't zero will always be evaluate to true as well. So the reason that I bring this up is that sometimes things can get a little bit more complicated when you're using an if statement. If you're putting a variable into a if statement condition, first try and understand what you're working with. And we can do that using var dump, as we've already seen, if you're not too sure. 
So that pretty much covers what we want to look at with if statements. You should be able to now create if statements and create variables and use these to check if a condition has been run. And we've looked at some practical examples along the way as well.